Good afternoon traders and welcome to this week's weekly market analysis and Monday the 13th of November. Before I do get started please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. Okay let's have a look uh, what's happened this week. I'll just post up what news is coming this week but let's have a look at what's happened see what's dominating and uh, where the market may take us. Um, we start off in the US. At the moment the US is being affected by tax reforms and, and the situation that's going over there. Um, the sentiment is that if it's done correctly it could actually be uh, President Trump's best achievement uh, in term. Uh, the main issue though is that everyone believes that it's, um, it can't really provide the economy with a sustainable long-term boost that it requires. Uh, this week for uh, the US dollar we have um, a whole bunch of data actually. Um, basically we have retail, sale, retail sales, building permits and unemployment uh, on the agenda amongst other things as well and I'm highlighting everything USD for the week that is coming. If we have a look at uh, the GBP, well, last week uh, the GBP was one of the best performing currencies and that was due to an early week rally and uh, a strong finish uh, with strong manufacturing numbers on Friday. Um, this week we have the average earnings and retail sales uh, on the agenda. Uh, in other bits of uh, news that's happening uh, regarding the GBP is the Brexit talks. It appears that uh, Prime Minister May is being more cooperative than the EU is being. So they're playing more hardball, she's been more cooperative and it looks like that she's willing to pay the exit penalties and, and perhaps a little bit more in order to negotiate better trade agreements. So that's all from the UK. If we move over to Australia locally RBA left interest rates unchanged this week. Also the GDP forecast was left unchanged as they believe that the low interest rates that we are currently experiencing uh, continue to support our economy. Um, the monetary policy statement which was delivered on Friday also was a very firm and neutral statement. In other words, not indicating anything about increased rates or uh, a decrease either. This week for the Aussie dollar we have employment change and employment rate is the key uh, figures that are due out for the week. Um, that's pretty much the highlight. Uh, other news is not as impacting. I think the currency that's possibly um, going to impact us the most as I look at the, the, the GBP data that's coming out that I already mentioned, average earnings, retail sales, the key ones, the, ones that the currency that's going to be affected the most by data this week is going to be the GBP USD. So please note that, make sure that you we don't get caught up in anything that we don't want to be caught up in. The times that I'm showing you are in my local time, which is Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time. Okay, all right, I will bring my charts forward. Let's have a look what's been happening. We'll analyze. If you do have any questions at this point, please type them in. They can be off topic uh, and I will do my best to answer them for you. All right, Aussie dollar, let's kick off. Now, I still got open positions from last week. Last week we opened up a US, uh, sorry, an Aussie dollar position based on on these two candles over here which we decided was a body engulfing um, type setup in a falling market. Now immediately the following day we were negative we came back down and it's just been zigzagging quite a little bit in that section. Um, on the plus side if I drop the, look, the chart still looks good. So I believe that the trade right now we're roughly at a very, very similar level to where we entered. Um, so the bias is that there's no change. So effectively, we're still short on this trade. So if there's anybody logged into today's class that was not in last week's class, 
the trade has not moved to the one to one level yet the one to one level would have been over here somewhere so technically if you like it you can still jump in and join it okay when I look at this on a four hour chart what I do like about this chart is that we can definitely start to see that there's a lot of congestion happening here and I can start to see there's a level forming here should we break that level then that really opens up the full target on our trade and uh, the probability of reaching our target becomes increasingly uh, higher okay so Aussie dollar for this week I'm still holding a position that I we entered live last week so I'm not really going to do anything we're still roughly neutral so we're going to stay with it hopefully we break this level that we've sort of started to create and fall towards uh, our target level okay should we stop out that means that uh, we've come back above this level it, then we need to analyze the whole chart again and see if uh, it perhaps is a change of, of um, trend or anything along those lines okay so there you have it that's our Aussie dollar please excuse me a little bit today I've got a little bit of a head cold my voice probably sounds a little bit different I'm trying to push through um, as best as it I can all right Euro USD we're currently holding an open position on the Euro USD as well last week we saw that there was like a, a head and shoulder pattern there we broke through and we basically on a pullback test and then we hit the trade over there so let me zoom in specifically the candles that we got in on the trade were these two it was an engulfing set of candles we took the trade immediately we were in the positive didn't quite reach the one to one the one to one was about there so we got close but not quite and then basically uh, now it's pulling back we're still in the trade if today's candle this is today's candle if this ends up forming a new inside candle so let's say today's candle finishes like this okay we would have a fractal there tomorrow and we'd have another set of inside candles here if you're not in this trade already okay you could possibly jump in on it on Wednesday should you get that combination if you are in this trade already well then basically we just gotta wait and as you can see from the markings on my chart that was my entry level there so I am in this trade and I'm still chasing this target over here which is my two to one target over there my stop is over here so I will continue to stay in the trade and nothing's changing for me however if you've just logged in today if I had just logged in today I wouldn't take it just because I'm already in the trade okay so if this was the first time I was looking at this chart I would not enter this trade right now I would still wait for this price action because what could happen is we could uh, get stopped out here and this if this price action if we do get another price action set up right here indicating in this direction well then that's a, a really strong sign that it will actually go down and uh, and possibly head towards where we want it to go okay so this is different to the first one that I showed you the Aussie dollar one the trade hasn't moved too much it's still roughly at the same level this one where is heading towards our stop and we've got the opportunity to find out and check if these two candles here gives us the point where it's going to turn around again does that make sense for everybody yep okay so because I can just see that the numbers in today's class is a lot higher than last week so I can see a lot of new faces in there so just wanted to point that out if I was seeing this for the first time right now I would not enter it right now I would wait for these two candles to see if I get the inside candle but since I'm already in it well then I'm already in it so I, I gotta wait it out to either get stopped out or if it moves towards my target okay that's my euro USD let's uh, move along let's have a look at the GBP USD okay this one's pretty 
obvious I'm still following this line which I've had on my chart now for a couple of weeks and we've got one two three and what I'm really waiting for is I'm waiting for the market to come down provide me a price action reversal pattern so that I can get an opportunity to trade off the line okay so we got close last week and I mentioned I didn't feel that that was close enough so we didn't look for it so nothing has changed on my GBP USD position what I am noticing though is I'm noticing a lot of sideways movement there and a little bit of uh, congestion but for now I'll just let it ride and let's see if we can come to the line and we get price action I'm still willing to take the trade in this direction provided that I get that those setups that I am actually looking for okay so let me have a quick look at a four-hour chart to see if there's anything different See, on a four-hour chart, I could easily start to box this market up. And what I may do is I might just leave this here. This is on a, based on a four-hour. So this is what I'm talking about, that the market has found like one point, two points there, one and two there. So if this comes down to this level, it's going to be close to the, the bottom and also very, very close to this line anyway. So if I, something happens here, I really, I'm very interested in that trade. That's the one that I really, really want. Let's say it does not happen and this now just starts to go this direction. When it gets to here, on a four hour chart, I will look for a possible short opportunity as well. Now remember, it's not, uh, if, you, if you do take this short that I'm drawing in right now, the idea is that you should be out of this trade by the time you get back down to this side because this would be considered uh, a counter trend uh, in a consolidating zone type trade so it's not one that you can push for massive targets so it depends on the shapes of the candles that we got there so for example if we happen to get something that looked like this let's say we get a candle looks like that as my big candle and a little inside candle there if my stop had to be at that level and my entry was at that level, so this is my, my stop distance, well then, always just notice where your 1 to 1 level is and then where your 2 to 1 level is. If I've got enough room to get to my 2 to 1 before this region here, well then that's great. But if this candles, for example, was like this let me just redraw a little bit if it was like that all of a sudden now my stop that's where my entry would be so my one to one I'm just doing this visually is about there and my two to one I can see that would be down here somewhere okay so now it would make good sense for me uh, so what I would say is when I get to one to one definitely I want to take some kind of action because this level may hold and, it, and we may never actually get to this target all right and this is part of understanding how to t if you're going to enter a trade on a technical reason it also makes sense to exit the trade on a technical reason as well and to try and exit the trade over here well then does not make sense because the probability is diminished so this is always important to see what these two candles look like and how much room they give you based on uh, your potential resistance levels or support levels that you're heading in towards is that clear for everybody because this is very very important and uh, I get a lot of people sometimes stay in trades chasing a target which is technically incorrect and um, that definitely reduces your your probability so if you don't have enough on your target if you can get to your two to one and you don't like it well then it's better to just sit it out okay all right so there you have it that's our GBP USD but the the first priority is we're trying to 
see if we can get a trade based on the daily candle. I'm going to extend this line a little bit more so that it, I can see it better. All right, let's move along to the US yen. Okay, US yen this morning. Did it, has everybody seen the daily call already? If you've seen the daily call, uh, there, there was a buy and it has triggered. Now, this is interesting. Now, when I do the daily call, guys, I'm just trying to find interesting charts or the highest probability. You would have seen, I think, last week, I also had a daily call on the yen, which was in the other direction. So some of you may be feeling a little bit confused. Now, when we spoke last Monday in this class, this is the chart that I was showing you. Clearly see one, two, and we were at a third level. And I said clearly in that class, if I get some kind of price action here, I will look for this trade. Do we all remember that? All those of you who are here, do you remember that? Yep, great. Consequently, I think the following day, we let me zoom in so we can all see it a little bit better. The following day, we produced these two candles here. Okay, now it doesn't look like your normal type of uh, inside candles, but it is an inside candle. The green one is inside of the red one. So uh, basically what that meant was that should we break that level there, we would enter the trade. Now it did break, okay, and the trade was forward, not quite, one to one would have been about here somewhere, that's one to one, if we were trading in this direction. But we, we haven't reached it yet, and it's pulling back right now. So if you're in that trade, okay, uh, if you're in this particular trade as a short, well then I w the, the correct thing from a technical point of view is, there is there's no reason you should exit this trade. Okay, and remember when I prioritize the types of trades that I like better, uh, channels, either horizontal or or inclined channels, uh, triangles, convergent triangles, any kind of patterns, supports and resistance uh, levels, for me, have a higher probability than the trend-based trade. Alright, so if you're in this trade, sure, well then you, you're in a legitimate trade. Now, today, because uh, there wasn't much available today, if I ignore this part of the chart, let me get rid of it, okay, and I strictly look at this part of the chart, okay, it would appear that possibly I could be in the trend upwards, okay? So, if I'm considering a trend-based trade, remembering that I'm always favoring the other types before the trend ones, today we saw these two candles okay and it was an inside candle and I said okay so if we break that level there we are buyers so can I just get a show of hands is anybody in this trade right now long yep there's a couple of people you know all right so this trade is also a correct trade based on a different reason you, it could play out that, let me see, the good thing about this one is, this is your one, so this is my one to one, the two to one is going to be very close to that peak, okay, so if you're long, it's going to be very, very close to this, so you've got enough room, and if you're short, well then, uh, look, my gut feeling is that short's going to win, alright, but there's still two legitimate trades. Okay, so I just want to highlight that to you, and, and the market does this to us all the time, and we need to learn how to cope with it. So, for example, if you were already short, you would have had to make a decision do you stay in this trade or do you uh, not participate in the new one? Okay, so that's the main message that I wanted to, to show you. When I look at this chart, still, um, I'm actually short. 
this trade, but I'm sure in another account, I don't remember which which one I'm in. So I'm actually still sure on this trade. So for me, I did not take the daily call this morning because I was already short and I like the bias. I have the, the, the fundamental bias that the US is going to strengthen which will hurt and obviously the yen, the yen wants to weaken so the fundamentals support my technical trade on this one which and my entry point is roughly I'm a little bit up on this one just a little tiny bit and I'm looking to go in this direction okay so I hope that I've explained that well there's been two setups in both in different directions and they're both legitimate trades okay so Let's see if you're in one of them or not. I'm still on the short one, so I did not participate in the one that is long. But I just wanted to highlight it for you. Okay? All good. Any questions on that one? It's a little bit tricky. Excellent. Okay, so now we just got to wait and see what happens on this one. Uh, um, for all of us that took the trade last week, we hope it goes down. For anybody that took it today, we hope it goes up. All right, Euro Yen. Okay, we started to draw this uh, channel last week. Let me zoom in on it a little bit better. So, okay, we got the one touch and the two touches up top. We got the one and the two down the bottom. So let me zoom in and start to look at things. Oh, look at this. It was very, very close. I would have called it out on a daily call, but we didn't quite get any type of uh, price action pattern around that. I was looking, but it just did not happen for us. So, oh, this one's... Uh, let me just jump into a four hour chart for one moment. I just want to see if I can see anything different. Okay, no, nothing really different. So we'll stick to the the daily chart. Let me just bring my lines back on. I'll leave them on there and see uh, how this plays out. Right now, I'm very close to here but I don't think I can actually physically get a setup of these none of these candles can give me a setup you know because we've got a lower low over here even if this one we set up two candles in there it still wouldn't meet the criteria so it, it almost feels like I have to let it run away and wait for it to come back before we get another opportunity at it okay so for right now just leave it alone um, it came to the border, but it just didn't give us anything. All right. Okay, it's unfortunate. Let's move along. Let's have a look at the Kiwi dollar. Okay, Kiwi dollar last week. Let me count back. That's one, two, three, four. We were at this candle here. And I remember that I said, from experience, what generally I like out of this kind of pattern it's like a double bottom here. Um, it can do this kind of thing. And then just break through like a, what let's call it the bouncing ball type situation as it, it bounces lower and lower until it falls off the edge of the table. Unfortunately, it's done exactly what, uh, what I was thinking, but it has not produced... <coughs> 
it did produce an inside candle here if I draw those there and that inside candle I would have been looking to trade downwards okay however you can see and this is the beautiful thing about price action or the way that I like to do it is we did get the setup but you can see that this green candle over here broke on the upside which instantly means that we cancel our order and we wait so then these two candles here have not produced it either so we've got to wait guys we there's nothing else that I can do but wait let me just see one thing No, there's, uh, there's nothing guys on this one, uh, we've got to wait, we know what we're looking for but it just has not been delivered, so look ideally maybe this candle goes up a little bit, just a little bit over that and then we get it right there, um, I would like to get that pullback lower than that level or at that level okay so if I get it at that level and then I, I get the price action to go uh, to become a seller that would be great so unfortunately we didn't get it off this level so maybe it may push up a little bit more and then provide it to us I'll keep a look out if I do see it it will be one of my um, charts of the day all right let's have a look at the US CAD I looked at this chart long and hard this morning and I almost chose this chart it almost looks like there's an inside candle right here and at the break of that you can go in that direction as continuation of trend but it's not an inside candle this one is actually a little bit higher than that one there so it looks like it but it's not and because the candle is so little I just uh, I didn't uh, I didn't call this one out all right so it's a very very close one it almost looks like a less it's not a fake but it, it's not quite an inside candle so it appears that the US CAD has changed directions the what we can possibly trade off tomorrow is if I get if this current candle finishes kind of like that then the three candle sequence it's not going to be a perfect one but at least the the yellow one here that I'm drawing will be an engulfing a body engulfing over this one and uh, and as a three it will look it will look fairly decent so I would be willing to trade that like that so what we need is the current candle to at least body engulf this little one and come up to at least about this level I'm thinking and then I would be happy with the, with the candle pattern and I would be happy to take a, a long on the US CAD does that uh, make sense for everybody so it would be a three candle sequence that I, that I would be trading um, looking for the for the current one to finish it around about that level that would be really really good Okay, let's have a look at gold. Okay. It feels like it's doing this. That's what it feels like. It's been very uniform. There is a body in, let me zoom in a bit more. There is a body engulfing candle right now here to go in this direction the only problem with that is that this would be my target that's you, we know we're going to come into some kind of possible support at that line and look that's my risk 
there's not enough room to hit my, my proper targets. My proper target would be down here at 2 to 1 somewhere. And we're going to come into trouble even before I get to my 1 to 1 target, which my 1 to 1 target looks like it would be down here somewhere. Okay, so bottom line is, even though I do have the correct candle sequence, it's kind of in order, it looks good. I just don't have enough room to possibly trade this trade and so that it gets an opportunity to play out and, and go towards its technical target. All right, so gold, yes, there is a body in golf in, in trend going down, but the support level is too close and there's not enough room for the target. Oil. Uh-huh, so oil has uh, had that exponential move. Let me see what that level compares to like in history. I'm just changing to a weekly chart. Okay, so there's a little bit of history up here. But we've cleared all this. Back to my daily. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, I can maybe draw a line up here somewhere. I'm just adjusting my line, that's all I'm doing. What do we think of my line, guys? One touch, two, three. We like it. I'm on a daily chart. Okay, so what I like about this chart is, well, first, so let me zoom out so you can all see it clearly. So that's the line that I've just drawn in. Okay, you can clearly see it there. Um, what I also like is often when, when a market exponentially moves, okay, like a very, very rapidly, and usually it's caused, it's cleared, like all, it's cleared that level there. So it's probably taken out a lot of stops on its way up, okay, and usually at some point it feels like it's, it may run out of energy and they may turn around and it happens to be lined up with this level here so I like that so let me zoom in now and let's have a look at what's happening at that level okay the, the way that I see it is there was already an inside candle right here okay and in fact also it triggered it triggered down it hasn't moved too far forward and it hasn't gone too far backwards, so this is a legitimate trade. So, for some of you who may not be familiar with oil, if you ever trade something that you're not familiar with, what I suggest is before you take a trade, just jump into your demo and take the smallest allowable trade of that instrument and just so that you and then just watch it for a little while it won't take you too long so that you understand how big your trade is okay so that's very very important um, so that you don't get confused uh, currencies uh, commodities indices uh, they're all different so so please make make sure that you do that how do how do you get a demo uh, Paul, easiest way is just go to the admiralmarkets.com.au website and log in with your details already. You would have already uh, uh, your own details. You log in. Let me do it for you. I'll show you. Give me a sec. Let me bring up a, a page because 
some of you will have this question. So basically, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to admiralmarkets.com.au. Make sure you go to .com.au, and then uh, you'll see that it says Traders Room. So I'll click on Traders Room. Now, all of you who are in this room right now, I believe, have, have got a live account with us. So basically, put in your email, your password, then just click Authenticate. This will get you inside of the room. Okay, and then over here, I'll just highlight it for everybody to see. Okay, it says uh, open a demo account, just click on it, and that's it. So if I click on open a demo account, basically it should give me the options now to choose the currency that I want, and how much money I want to put in the, in the account, and the leverage that I want. Okay, click on open, and it will open it up. That's it. All good? Let me get my platform back up. Okay, another question. Simon asked, is it consolidated last five days with lower highs or highs? The start of a flag. Oh, okay. Now, this is a good question. Simon's asking, does this look like a bit of a flag? And it could push upwards in that direction. Normally the flag uh, would be would have a longer flagpole. So if this candle was a bit longer like this, and then you could have a second candle like this, that would be possibly considered a flag as such. But I, I just feel that uh, this is an exponential move rather than uh, a flag. Okay, so there you have that. That's the answer to that question. All right, so having said that, I'm going to take a trade on oil, and I'll just take the smallest division possible, and let me just measure out. Um, uh, one second. 57. I'm going to put my stop at about 57.90. I'm just writing this down. Comment being made, there's, are there too many sellers over the 57.3 level? Well, look, uh, it, one thing, it looks possibly, yes, one, we can see that it's on a support level, uh, sorry, on a resistance level. And then all these candles here have quite long wicks at the top, but they also have them down the bottom, well, longer towards the top, so it feels like the market's getting there and getting driven back down. It looks like the exponential move has gone to where it, where other part of the market says, at this level, we're happy, uh, we're happy to sell into this, and they're basically pushing to sell down, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to become one of those, and we're going to sell into this. So here we go, right click new order can I just get confirmation that you guys can still hear me can you still see my screen Okay, can you hear me now, guys? Yep. Thank you. I accidentally hit my um, mute button. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the smallest possible uh, trade on this one. Uh, when you do this, one way that you can do... See, he... Because sometimes we get asked this question. I've tried to take a, a 0 0.01 trade. But notice that this button, they're, they're not highlighted, basically means it's too small. So 0 0.1. Now notice that the buttons became lit up, they lit up, which, which means that this is a trade size that I can do. All right, so I'm just going to sell it. And my stop, I said I'm going to put at 57.90. So I'm just typing it in, 57.90. And my profit, I'll just start it off anywhere and I'll adjust it in one second. 
Okay, so here we go. Okay, there I'm in the market. Um, and I'm just going to adjust this to a two to one level. Oops. I'm just clicking and dragging. I'm just doing it visually. And I think it's at about that level there. Of course, I, c I can let my supreme trade terminal control the trade uh, so that when it reaches that one to one level, I can make a decision if it's something that I want to take action on or not. Okay. All right. So there you have it. We I have just sold into WTI. The reason for it is we are on that Re, uh, sub resistance level and I've produced an inside candle uh, I'm one day late on it but um, it's not, I'm at the same level so I'm happy to take that tra trade okay any questions on anything while I go back and recap we've covered uh, all the majors and I'll just recap right now if you do have any questions please type them in Aussie dollar we are still holding a short position from last week, so nothing's changed. We'll continue with that. Euro USD, same situation. We're holding a, a short from last week. If you're brand new uh, this week, uh, then wait for the current candle to finish. And if you get an inside candle of these two, well, then you could have an entry tomorrow. GBP USD, we're waiting to come down to the blue line, and we've also noted in that grey area that we do have a consolidation zone. US Yen, I'm short sure from last week, or last Tuesday I believe it was, um, today there's a daily call in the other direction. Uh, if you're in the original trade, then you don't need to go into the second trade. Let me move on. Euro yen, we came to the fringe, no setup, so we leave it alone. We're waiting. Okay, we dollar, we get in the bouncing ball type effect, but we didn't get a setup, so we're hoping that it pushes up a little bit more and gives us another opportunity to set up. US CAD, it's a very, very close look alike. It's not quite an inside candle, so we're leaving it alone and see what produce what it can produce for us. Gold we do have an engulfing candle but there's not enough room for our target so we're not going to trade it and finally WTI we are at a resistance level we've produced an inside candle and we've just taken a short uh, from this level here aiming downwards quick question question is can I chart any time frame apart from what I'm showing you here okay so look feel free to one of the, the, the reasons price action works so well with a daily time frame or a four hour time frame is because on a daily uh, candle, for example, it gives everybody around the world an opportunity to, to trade and the one candle is a result of what everybody thought for an entire day. If I apply the same principle on a five minute chart, for example, it's only the market movement for a five minute period. All right. So if you go into... if I, I like my price action. Um, if I'm day trading, I'm happy to do it on a 15 minute. I won't go anything smaller than that. But four hour or a day or an hourly, hourly or two hourly or whatever is quite okay as well. But generally, because of my time limitations that I can spend looking at a chart, uh, that's why I'm sticking. To, I tend to stick to a daily and a four hour. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Any other questions, guys? Can I review the GBP USD? Yeah, I just did that one. GBP USD, basically, we've got this support level, oops, support level that we've been tracking, and what we're waiting for is for it to come down here. If it can produce the price action that we're interested in, well, then we will be looking for that trade there. The class is recorded as well, so you can go back and, and review any bits that you've missed. It should be posted up probably in about an hour's time. Okay, if there are no more questions, we'll wrap it up today. Um, what is a valid limit? Look, generally, um, the, generally with price action method that I'm doing is I will trade two to one. Okay, 
meaning that whatever my stop distance is, I will attempt to go for twice that limit. Okay? Uh, let me see, I've got another question, I'm trying to figure out which is the question. Paul, are you asking me, can you do a two hour chart? Is that what you, are you asking me, am I limited by these times up here only? Is that what you're asking me? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I will get back to you on that. There is something that I have that may be able to help you. Okay, I'll send you an email. Any other questions? No, uh, no, uh, Roberto, no, I will, I won't place a pending order here to buy when it goes there. I don't trade straight off the line. What I suggest is, I think you may be new. Um, whoever has invited you here, ask them for access to the price action method and it will really, really help you out. So just take an hour to watch the method and then uh, the Monday classes, if they seem a little bit like you're not following where, where we're at, watch that first and then it'll make a lot more sense. Okay? Cheers. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up uh, for this week. Uh, remember, just keep watching the daily call. Uh, I appreciate you turning up. It makes it more fun for me. I'll talk to you all live next week, or I'll talk to you tomorrow on recording. Bye for now.